I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you are listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily Jazz Advice coming at you. There's something going on with my cadence, man. I'm sorry. It's uh, we're, we're deep in the podcast recording right now, so you know how it goes. It's like the muscle memory fades. <laughs> The pod is the is the pod cave starting to, to close on us here? It feels like smell, honestly. It smells a little I mean, bit I'm, like jazz and man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a jazzy man pod cave. Yeah. It starts to, it's starting to smell like a Kranich and Bach. <laughs> it does. Man, this is a little musty and musky. It sounds musky. Musky. What's it between musk and mus- musk? M- a musky is a fish, I believe, in the Baltic region of the world. <laughs> really? Yeah. Man, you are very attuned to the world's fisheries. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a world traveler. M- musky. But I was, isn't there an Old Spice musk men's deodorant? <laughs> no, a musk is like a, <laughs> as a scent that a mating bull will give off. I don't know what I'm talking oh. about. Oh, <laughs> no, but I think there is a musk. Musk scent, like old school 70s Old Spice. <laughs> anyway, are we off topic yet? 80% I, of the time, it works every time. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about uh, groove. We have a, a question here from a listener. Approach on groove. Okay. How do you find your groove? How do you create your own groove when you're playing it? And this is a suggestion from Johnny on Facebook. Thanks, okay, Johnny. Well, sh- we should probably give this a title. Look, this is going to be fun. This will be a real-time episode uh, in the making here. How do you find your groove? How, how Peter got his groove back. I find it. Um, did you ever see that movie, How Stella Got Her Groove? That's what I was oh, referencing, man. Okay. That was direct <laughs> reference. That's the joke. How do you ha, ha. How do you find your groove? How okay. do you find your groove? See, we are doing this in real time. Okay, so thank you for the question, Johnny, um, or suggestion, as it were, on Facebook. You can always hit us up there. Totally. Um, and uh, this is a, a really interesting area, really interesting question. We hit on it in different ways, but it certainly deserves its own discussion and I would just say you know kind of first what's so important is like I think confidence in grooves there's many different kinds of grooves many different ways to find it many different ways to work on it but ultimately what we're looking for is is some confidence in groove I think we should define some terms here before we go any further because uh, some people might be confused about the difference between groove and rhythm or groove and time right but there is a difference you want to explain the difference between groove and just time yes so I think groove is uh, well, this is a tricky one because there's several. Um, it's it's a word that has several different meanings. Like because we could say you're in the groove. It's like a noun that says right. like a state of being. You know, yep. oh that's really grooving, and that could be any type of groove. Yep. But then there are many different types of groove, and I think some people, maybe some m- members of the jazz police, might be like it's either swing or it's a groove. And I think what we believe, yeah. yeah, see, I can already tell by your, yeah, your, yeah. your your distaste for that. I mean, swing is a groove. It's one of the grooves. It's one of the grooves. Yeah, there, are many di- there are infinite grooves, really, because you can make up your own grooves yeah. as you're going here. So That's right. And maybe that's what this question is really <laughs> <laughs> alluding to. But yeah. That's right. So th- but that's what we're talking about today, right, is, is how do you create your own groove or how do you find that groove? How do you play in the groove is kind Maybe of Maybe it's actually, actually, how do you find your groove much as the, the Angela Bassett movie <laughs> about going to the Caribbean go to after a divorce, <laughs> yeah. a divorce? Maybe that's actually, maybe we're, we're, we were overthinking this. <laughs> <laughs> One plane ticket to St. Thomas, please. Right. Cool. It's interesting because how do you find your groove um, or approach on groove? So I, th- I think I like to look at, and I want to talk about time too, like as you said, because that is a little bit different linked but different um i like to think of the things that connect all grooves as opposed to like separating them too much because then we can talk about some approaches some 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 things to work on some skills that we want to acquire that are applicable for any kind of groove so although grooves are different there are similarities and i always think it's fun to to discover those and work on them because then it's like, wow, okay, you can apply this in a number of different areas and your playing is getting better in a more efficient way than saying like, okay, this month I'm going to work on my bossa nova groove and master that. Then I have to totally erase all that and move on to a, a samba groove, you know, whereas there's so many great connections between them. And I think, you know, this thing I was just starting to, to talk about confidence in groove you can take that from one area that maybe because most people are like, well, I feel good about my swing groove, but my funk groove is eh, or my funk groove is really strong, but my swing. And I think that the confidence that you can understand in, in, in what a groove is can be applied to a number of different areas if you allow yourself to do that. Yeah. For me, this this question kind of alludes to syncopation and eighth notes and and how to to uh, control those things yeah. in different situations, right? Spacing. 
as you were saying, like maybe you're confident in your swing groove that you have a groove that you can always lock into and that feels really good to you. But like you said, then maybe you go to like a funk tune and it f- doesn't feel right because you're maybe doing the same thing or it's yeah. not the same thing, but it doesn't feel like you. And yeah, I think there's some different ways you can do that. I, I don't know about you, but you know, I'm always sort of experimenting on a, on a piano that I'm playing with like the, the length of eighth note. I mean, I have my go-to, right? I have my like, my da 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 Like I have that eighth note that I go to all the time. Right. That's, that's like a crowd pleaser yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But on a slower tempos, Maybe it's a maybe it's a swinger, a little yeah. head bopper right here. A little head bopper. I will I will give either some I'll I'll either depending on the mood I'm in, experiment with and and work on da 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 or da 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 you know, really yeah. widening and widening and narrowing the groove. Same thing with the funk stuff. And then there's the other thing of putting that sort of laying that back, mm-hmm. leaning forward on it in a, like a chick style. Yep. Uh there's there's chick diff- Korea. Chick- is, yeah, yeah, Chick Corea style. Yeah. There's different ways of 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 working these grooves yeah. to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just thinking this is a little. Well, no, it's not off topic. It's right about groove. But I just want to before I forget this because I think this might be helpful for somebody looking on how to find your groove. Mm-hmm. Um, the great Herlin Riley, drummer extraordinaire oh, from New Orleans. That's a groove right there. He's a groove. I mean, like like when you think about if you were to say, who's the groovingest drummer? You can name a lot of people, but He's no one there. would argue if you said him. Yeah. But something that I learned from him, and I, I love learning these kind of like musical life lessons that you can take and apply forever. It's just like, it's like somebody gives you a gift of like, here's a million dollars, put that in the bank, and then just draw out the interest every year, and, and yeah. you'll have some money, you know? Yeah. It's like they're giving you a gift. Uh, but, you know, I had played with him, and I mean, I, I met him when I was in my, well, I met him when I, I think I was about 18 years old up in New York when he was working first with Wynton Marsalis. But then when I moved to New Orleans, you know, he's like a legend there, and I got to play with him some over the years quite a bit. But something I learned about Groove from him took many years till I actually had a discussion with him about it. We'd been on some different grooves, and one thing that I always, some different gigs, <laughs> I, something I admired in him was his ability to like really seemed like masterfully and in a very authentic way master all these different grooves brazilian grooves new of course new orleans grooves mm-hmm. straight ahead funk like and he had so much confidence in how he played i'm like man he must have just studied all i mean obviously he studied all these grooves but i i had never seen a drummer or been around a drummer that could play them all so authentically and so joyfully yeah. but still have their personality and i was always like man he must have just like found the essence of each one as he got into it and like or or like traveled to brazil and talked to the special people or traveled to africa and, and got the secret scroll and like i don't know i was like how did he put all this together I'm like well, he's a little older than me maybe he just was working hard at it but years into our you know kind of friendship and musical relationship i kind of talked to him we were working with jazz lincoln center together and we did something like with this Cuban Montuno thing, which I was really didn't know what I was doing on it. And I remember we were kind of just sitting there. I said, man, Herlin, could you kind of help me? Like, what's the official Montuno? Which one is it on this? Because, like, he was sort of playing it perfectly and linking up. And he was like, um, I, I, and I don't want to misquote him, but he was basically like, what's a Montuno? <laughs> I mean, he's kind of like, what do you mean, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just play the groove. And I was like, what do you mean? I, I, I thought like he had the exact textbook definition and could like delineate, you know, just break it down like that. But he was just sort of like, you'll hear it. It's basically what yeah, he was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But it started to realize, and I asked him some more things. I was like, what about the Brazilian thing? Like how did, so then I started quizzing him about all this, how did you learn those things? And it was all like, you really listen and you try to find the connection between this other nationality's grooves and what you already know Mm -hmm. and what you already feel. And so he was always relating it with New Orleans music because he's from New Orleans. He's from a lineage of like great New Orleans musicians going all the way back to like the beginnings of jazz. That's an advantage. But also, you know, like he always connected it some way with something that he could already do confidently. And so he never was like, I have to be a scholar in Brazilian music to know the difference between a bayon and a samba. I'm going to listen to it see how it connects with what I already know with grooves, find what's similar instead of what's different, and then just play it my way in a confident way. That's awesome. And so, like, I started doing that since then. I never have achieved the level of authenticity that Hurley Riley does, yeah. but I grabbed a little, I stole a little bit at it, and I always think about him. So just, just 
taking from from what you hear from that groove what different groove that you may not be an expert on but keeping that part of yourself that that stuff that you already know and right applying yeah the it part that, exactly and like some of the things you were starting to mention about syncopation and 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 different things like these are all the same elements that are used to put any kind of groove and yeah you have to learn it and, and a certain amount of you know a- academic information about it can help but it's mainly about listening to it imitating play along playing along with it imitating people that can play it well but then connecting it with something with some groove that you are confident in yeah. so that you can kind of put your own little take on it as well so let's let's connect this to maybe his his question here about you know finding your groove in your playing finding that sound that feel for you yeah i think it's all about listening i think it's about finding the players that you connect with you know that really hit have a groove that you love yeah. and then mimicking them, playing along with their recordings, transcribing them, listening, listening, listening to them, yeah. getting that language of their groove in there, getting your, their eighth note in, yeah. you know, it, it, it's incredibly effective. Yeah. And it's almost like, you know, any, like if you're really trying to get voicings, like two handed voicing. So you're learning some transcriptions that, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're learning by transcribing and then you're focusing on that part of the pianist playing. Yeah. You're trying to get your, your bebop lines so that you're focused as you're learning that or listening to something. It's like you're doing that with the group. You are focusing in on your instruments, playing in that, but then really focusing in on what the feel is. And when you focus, I think, on feel, and look, so much of groove is about the feel. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not as much of an analysis as some parts of the music that you know, maybe the harmonic or the melodic areas. Well, because you can't teach it. You have to just hear it and do it. That's and right. That, it's, it's the ne- it's, if you're learning a language, that is the fluency. Yeah. You know, that- but I, there's definitely an ear training aspect to this, I think, that sometimes gets overlooked. So that at the same ways that we work on our ear training for expanding our harmonic, you know, normally we're associating that with harmonic things, mm-hmm. um, intervals, mm-hmm. chord structures, um, you know, melodic things too. But I think the, the rhythmic concepts that are the biggest part of how you can play grooves effectively does come from ear training of what the grooves is. So the same kind of things, listening over and over again, being able to identify different ones, that, that what makes things differently what what how they sound different you know identify and then trying to put them into your playing playing along with recordings the same way you would do with a transcription that kind of thing and really getting it through that kind of feel yeah so you know johnny it's not an original answer for us <laughs> to just say listen but that yeah. that to me is is i think the only way you're really going to get it you know you have to be have a, a bit of awareness about the groove of musicians that you like and and identify those pinpoint those yeah listen steal yeah. Apply them to your own playing. And, and when you're working on this part of your playing, just like any other kind of playing, like focus in on the players. And I mean, because we're pianists, we're always going to, well, look, let's talk about a trumpet player. So if you're a trumpet player and you really want to get your groove better, there's so many great trumpet players. But go with, go with like, like really focus in on, say, Roy Hargrove. Yeah. Because like he's grooving all the time. It's not to say that like Miles or Winton or all these great trumpet players aren't grooving too, but I mean, like, that's a core part of Roy's playing. It's a big part of and the he And he plays a number of different groups. If you listen to his hip-hop stuff, like, listen to the way he plays on those D'Angelo recordings. Like, he can fit into a lot of different grooves in a very authentic way. He's always Roy. Mm-hmm. He's always a jazz player, quote-unquote, but he can play any groove. He's just a grooving, you know... I mean, his, <laughs> yeah, his, I remember when I worked with him, I think like, where did the checks come from? I might be divulged. It was like his company's called like Hard Groove Productions or yeah, Hard yeah. Groove Enterprises or something. Yeah, Hard Groove, you know, because yeah. that's, and so it's like, you know, and it's not to take away from other players. It's just, you want to focus on that. Go, you know, if you're a pianist, Wynton Kelly, sure. he's, he's grooving. Yeah. Or, or any of the, like New Orleans players, you, in terms of groove, you can't go wrong because if you're a drummer hurling right, like he just... You know, I gave the whole story about him and Shannon Powell. The groove um, is strong. Brian Blade. There. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, it's it's a great area to think about. It can, I think the confidence thing, too, I don't want to, I, I don't want us to, I, I can't overemphasize that, too. This is an area for some reason, I, I see a lot of players are not as confident as they can be. And I think that the, the way to do it is to take that area that you are, that groove that you are confident with, find something to kind of move it over to those areas that you're not and fake it till you make it. That's so great, man. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Johnny, for the question. And, uh, you know, as always, if you want to ask us a question, you can go via Facebook to the Open Studio Facebook page if you like. Uh, but you could uh, more directly go to you'll hear it.com and ask a question there. You can uh, leave us a voice message. You can buy one of our T-shirts, which are beautiful. Right. Yeah. And 
You could buy us one of the t-shirts. I mean, I got to stop. I, I feel bad even asking for that, but I do want one. <laughs> I'm going to order one. Man, bro, you I'm, know what? I'm going to order one. When's your birthday? August. I know. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, next I year. I do celebrate Hanukkah, Ramadan, uh, Christmas, and Kwanzaa. Oh, my home. goodness. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you really? get more gifts. It's fun. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. Well, I know what to get you now in yeah. December. All right. Until next time, you'll hear it.